Hey guys, how's it going? So I'm standing in front of our cut flower garden and we are gonna be planting trees today. Uh, you know, we made a big push this spring, late spring-ish with a bunch of trees and evergreens out here in this new space. And you know, I thought my order was huge. We had to load stuff up on a trailer to bring it up here. But when we started planting things, like placing them around, I realized how much this space kind of gobbles things up and how much more we were gonna to need to fill it up, which that's the fun part. And it's gonna take several, several years to get it that way. But I'm starting to feel that urge to plant a few more things out here before we get too late in the season. So I've got two birch trees and one pine. And the two birch trees are actually a repeat of one that we planted this spring. I really like the way uh, trees look when they're planted in clumps. It makes it look like it happened more naturally, if that makes sense, um, because that's what they would probably do in nature. They don't space themselves out perfectly in nature. Uh, and sometimes you can even find trees like this planted together in the same nursery container, even this size. Like you'll see them, you know, three trunks in the same pot. And I've got three other clump birches in our garden and I just enjoy them so much. You know, I've got four. I've got four clump birches in the garden and in the winter time the uh, form like just the the structure of those trees adds so much interest i love it so the renaissance reflection birch right here i'm not going to plant them too close together i kind of want to plant them like this because they will like if they were planted by themselves they can get upwards of 50 feet tall 25 feet wide of course they'll kind of intermingle and just kind of be this beautiful mass um, toward the end and they really do it nicely I don't find with clump birches that you really have to prune them um, because they're so close together. They just kind of know, they kind of speak to each other and they grow accordingly. It's kind of weird and awesome. It's awesome to see that happening in nature, but beautiful fall color on these birch trees. And I really kind of want to limb them up a little bit. So when we are driving down the lane in the fall, well, at any point of the year, you can kind of look underneath these trees, which I'm planning to have a meadow underneath, and you can see the cut flower just beyond. Does that make sense? So we drive, you know, like right down this way, our driveway's over here, and if we lift, limb them up just enough, we'll be able to see that view of the cut flower garden eventually. It's gonna be so pretty. So zone three on these, you can see that they've succumbed to a bit of leaf scorch, and that kind of is typical uh, during the heat that we've been having, the prolonged heat. It's really hard to keep, especially water-loving plants like this, really happy in nursery containers because these have to be watered at least two times a day, if not three, to keep them happy because they dry out too fast. That's why I feel like getting them in the ground is a good idea. So did I say they're zone three? I think I did. Um, they are resistant to bronze birch borers, which is great, but I'm just really looking forward to seeing these plants grow, provide some shade and some interest. And our little pine tree is right over here. I wanted to show it to you from this angle. See it right over there? Look how cute that is. You can see the hydrangeas, denim and lace, the heliopsis we just planted that are doing great. I mean, they wilted down that first day because it was really hot when I planted it, but they just look wonderful. We've got the grasses, the dogwood. I'm tr considering planting this Montana moss juniper here. I have it sitting there in its can. Not sure if I'm gonna do that or not, so I'm just gonna leave it there for a little bit. We've got a royal frost birch right here that's got more of a, a purpley deep green leaf. And then here's the pine. This is called organ green. It's a zone four through eight and it will grow 20 feet tall by 15 feet wide. So putting it out here in this space, I know that I need to leave like seven and a half feet from each side uh, so that eventually, you know, this has enough room. And pine trees, they do fairly well in our area. I think having some pine structure out here, it's such a deep green. We've got a scotch pine on the other side. Um, so having this one here will be really nice. We also have an Arborvitae spring grove nearby, some blue spruces, which I'm hoping those blue spru <laughs> spruces root in and do better than the one that just fell down in the front of our garden. But you know, you can't let stuff like that keep you from trying trying things because you know there are blue spruces that are way older than that uh, planted around our area that are still standing I think one of the main reasons why that spruce went down was because it was still in its basket its root ball the basket was still there 30 plus years later with all the rope around it um, so anyway we learned the importance I've never really seen it in action I knew it was important to remove all that stuff but to see that happen in your own yard and have that kind of be one of the reasons why it fell down that'll make you remove everything forever. And I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's pretty smoky today. It seemed like the smoke, we were smoke free there for a while. And then yesterday it started moving back into the valley. We had a pretty windy night last night. So I think that maybe moved more of it in. Um, so it almost appears overcast today, but we're not going to do an enormous amount out here in the smoke. We'll just get the trees planted and then uh, make sure everything's 
well watered and move on to something different. And here comes Aaron. He's gonna come out and dig the holes. I have the auger here. Uh, so we use a nine inch auger and for the size of root balls we're dealing with today, we'll probably have to drill three or four holes in the same area to create a big enough hole. But Power Planter sent out a new drill. So before we were using a stud and joist drill, it was the DeWalt brand, but way heavier and more bulky. And it was almost borderline, I couldn't use it. This one is way lighter weight and way easier to manage. And I like that you can put this handle either here or you can screw it in here so you can have whatever configuration works the best for you, which I think Aaron prefers it this way and so do I. You can put one hand here, the other hand here and just hold it straight. Anyway, what's the name of this drill? Oh, uh, it's a concrete mixer. Concrete mixer. Yeah. Okay. Mixer. I don't, what's the difference between concrete and cement? I don't know. I think we had That's this discussion the other day. I should know, but... <laughs> It's like a, it's either a concrete or a cement mixer, one of the two. Well, it's much better than the last drill, much more easy to manage. So there are two bars left on this battery. Oh, so we need another one? I got another one. Oh, good. Yeah. Cool. You ready to start? I think so. Holes? Yep. I want your guys' opinion on this Montana moss. I really like the structure of this plant right here. I think it's beautiful. It grows two to four feet tall, about three to five feet wide, so it could kind of fill in this section right in front of the Arctic Fire yellow dogwoods, which might be really pretty to have that yellow in the winter and then the blue leaf structure. Either way, no matter what goes on, I think I need to have an evergreen, a smaller evergreen right here. So anyway, let me know what you think about that. They always kind of have like this windswept look that I really like. It's kind of a feathery texture. You can see we got the birches in. They look awesome. I love it. So we got them all hooked up on a drip. I'm at a landscape staple, so I'll have to come through and kind of tack those down so they don't move around. They tend to want to do that. Like when the water turns on, it kind of you know moves the, the tubing around a bit and then they get all off center. But anyway, I think this is going to be just a really beautiful clump right out here. That drill is so much better. It, uh, it spins faster, so it shoot, it makes more of a mess, but it shoots the <laughs> soil out. You don't say. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay, as, this whole area is a mess. As long as you're not worried about making a mess, yeah. it's way better than the other one. And while I was prepping this root ball, so it is a B&B, &B. you can see we've got the root ball right here, and typically, um, like I just make sure to get the rope, you know, from around the outside of the root ball on the outside of the burlap and then of course around from around the trunk because we don't want that to girdle. But what was interesting is I was cutting, um, when I was kind of cutting and releasing it, I noticed that underneath the burlap there was another uh, run of rope around the root ball. Uh, so if you don't actually remove all of the burlap, then you just don't know what's going on under there. I've actually ne never seen that before. So we got all the rope removed, everything should be good to go.
there's the pine. It looks really good right here. So what we ended up doing with the water is we tapped into the three quarter inch supply line there and just ran a new three quarter inch line. So we just cut in and put a three quarter inch T there, making sure to clamp all of them down so that the water pressure doesn't blow any couplers. I'm out of landscape staples, so again, we'll come in later and staple this down so it's not so squirrely. And of course, eventually it'll all be under mulch. And then we did the same thing. Tapped in with a quarter inch line, made a little loop around the trunk. So we should be good to go. So that is it for today. Super simple project, but really nice to have a few more trees in the ground. And it's always nice to know that everything's done with them. You know, all the drip is run. There have been a few times where I get a planting project done and I always think, oh, I'll just go back and run the drip later. I'm kind of like, I'm tired and I just want to admire the trees and not worry about all those little details. But there have been times where I have forgotten and all of a sudden I see a dead shrub and I think, oh my goodness, I watered it in, but I forgot to go back and finish it up. So it's always nice to have those details done. And it's also nice to see some more plants in this area. I think it's just going to get better and better as we go along. So anyway, thank you guys so much for hanging out. I hope you're having a great day and we will see you in the next video. Bye.